This is a new case from MSI. They showed this one off earlier in the year. This is called the MSI MAG Pano 100 LPZ. And I can already see the comments. Look, it's another fish tank. Oh, it's another O11 clone. I'm gonna show you what makes this case slightly different. So let's do a case review thing, right? It makes sense. We gotta figure out what the deal is. This video is brought to you by VIPSCDKey.com. Have you ever installed Windows 11 only to see the watermark of death? You don't need to fork out a couple of hundred dollars for a key. You can grab one from today's video sponsor from VIPSCDKey.com for a tenth of the price. You can use our code GEAR to get 30% off for this month only. How good is that? That takes that already cheap Windows 11 key and makes it even cheaper. It's easy as placing your order. Bingo bango. You've got your new key on your orders page. You chuck that key into the activation screen and you're good to go. No more watermark of death. Use code GEAR to get 30% off for this month only. Link in the description. On with the video, back to you, Nick. To get inside the Pano 100 LPZ, we'll remove the side panel. There's a little notch on the edge of the side tempered glass panel. You wanna pull that towards you, and then you guys know what to do. Lift it away from the case. There's two captive thumb screws on the rear of the top panel. You wanna loosen them, but you don't wanna take them all the way out. Then you want to grab the handle, pull it towards you, and then lift that away from the case. Next, we'll want to remove the back panel. There's a little notch on the edge of the panel, and you want to pull that towards you, and then lift that away. Lastly, we'll want to remove the front panel on the case. They have a warning saying, do not pull on the glass. And I'm going to show you why you shouldn't pull on the glass, right? Because it will come away from the case. So you don't want to do that because it's kind of glued to it but I've got stuff to fix it, so it's no big deal. I just wanted to show you what would actually happen, but to remove it, you wanna put your hand on the top edge behind the plastic, and then you can gently pull that away, like so. And it has a cable attached to it as well. There are some panels on the back to remove. These are optional, but I thought I'd show you this anyway. It's kind of like a little handle here and you want to fold this panel back. It's on a hinge and you can lift that and then pull that away. We've then got this panel here, which can also be removed. And there's a captive thumb screw and you kind of give it a bit of a tug. Then you swing it out and then you can lift this away from the case as well. This then leads us into storage compatibility. So on the bracket that we just removed, you can do a bunch of 2.5 inch drives and three and a half inch spinning rust drives. You can do two 2.5 inch drives or two two and a half inch SSDs on this panel here. On the bottom, we've got two more 2.5 inch SSD mounts. These are sleds that are removable with a captive thumb screw. So you can loosen those up and then you can mount your drives to these. There are a bunch of dust filters in the Pano 100 LPZ. This is one on the side panel. This is completely removable. It is magnetic. There's also another dust filter on the top panel of the case. This one is not as removable. I guess you could remove it if you really like to clean it. And lastly, there's another magnetic dust filter on the bottom of the case and it's taped in from factory, but you can take that out if you like. I'm just gonna leave it in there for now. Full power supply support, the Pano 100 LPZ supports a maximum supported length of 200 millimeters. Plenty of space here for activities, plenty of space for cables. You guys know how power supplies work. If not, this supplies all the power for your PC. Then you just learned something. I'd like to talk to you about your lard and sandwich Cable management, look at this, right? Think about all the cables you'll have installed in your PC. Where did they go? They're gone. It's almost like magic. Look at that, guys. All the cables are gone. Wow. That's all I got to say about cable management, let's be honest. Have I got food in my beard or is that just um, my gray hair? <laughs> <laughs> It'd only be peanut butter if it was food. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say, guys, is cable management is quite good in this because if you're going to be using a back connector board, which, I mean, this case is really designed for, you've got all these panels to hide everything, and I'm all about that. For fan and radiator support on the side of the Pano 100 LPZ, you can do three 120mm fans or two 140mm fans. Up top of the Pano 100 LPZ, you can do three 120mm fans, three 140mm fans. However, you cannot do a 420 radiator at the top. You can only do a 360. And that is to do with the size of end tanks on radiators. They just won't fit within the bounds of the frame of the case. 
On the bottom of the Pano 100 LPZ, you can do something very interesting. This bracket here, look at it. It's got two screws in it. If I could line my screwdriver up with it, that is. We remove these two little baby screws and this whole bracket will come out. We can do up to a 360 millimeter radiator or you can do three 120 mil fans. You can do two 140 mil fans and most interestingly, two 160 mil fans. And finally at the rear, which is everyone's favorite place, a single 120 mil fan mount. For air cooling support, we've got a maximum supported height of 166 millimeters. For motherboard support, the Pano 100 LPZ supports ITX up to ATX boards and no surprises here, it's an MSI case. So you know that it supports Project Zero and BTF and Project Stealth motherboards. And this is the Z790 Project Zero with a 14700K on it, some MSI SSD stuff and, you know, some RAM, but this is the board we're gonna be using for the build. So you get a bit of an idea of kind of the direction we're going for, but yes, it does support back connectors. I'll just pop out the board here. And it does something interesting that I've kind of addressed with some other cases with back connector support. And that is, say for instance, the 24 pin power connector. If you don't know, back connector motherboards, everything's on the back, it's right there in the name. And this one has a notch, so you can plug that cable in and remove it quite easily. For GPU support, you've got a maximum supported length of 380 millimeters. The keynote out there would have seen that the Pano 100 LPZ has a pre-installed vertical GPU bracket. Unfortunately, this case does not come with a riser cable, but it does come with a back panel that can be removed and replaced to allow you to put in a regular graphics card in the other horizontal orientations. To change the bracket, there's two captive thumb screws. You pull those thumb screws out and then the whole rear bracket comes out. Now, there's an included bracket that you can screw back in. You can either use the captive thumb screws out of the vertical bracket or just put in two other screws. And then you can pop this in. It's time for everyone's favorite thing, the flex test. We call this a bit of a benchmark to test the rigidity of fish tank cases, especially because there's no support here. And to be honest, this test isn't really that much of a benchmark because you're not gonna be moving your system around that much. Uh, there's a bit of shift with the lateral motion of the case, but pushing straight down, there's no flex. So I would say that it's okay because the only real motion we're seeing here is that lateral motion. And again, once the panels are on, it's going to be very, very rigid. So I would say this is a pass. Typically we like to test with downward motion. And yeah, that's very strong. For front panel wiring, there's a block for your lights and your switches that you know it's on and to turn it on. There's a front panel audio connector. There's also USB type C and USB type A. On the front panel itself, we've got USB type C, two USB type A ports, a combined headphone and microphone jack, a reset button, and a power button with an integrated power LED.
Alrighty, let's take a look at the thermals of the MSI MAG Pano 100L PZ. What you're seeing on your screen right now is the thermals are pretty good and we see a bit of a pattern here that we see with other systems with fans for intake on the bottom for GPU thermals. When the side panels close, we always see much better thermals. It's just the nature of the game. And essentially what's happening here is all of the air is being pulled in from the bottom and going straight up without any air coming in from the sides. Sometimes the direct airflow in from the side can be a hindrance because the airflow has to change direction. Whereas for this, the air's not changing any direction it's going into the GPU. So 14700K typically doesn't get that hot anyway. So yeah, the thermals are good. If you're interested in the rest of the hardware, there's a PC part picker list down below and you can peruse that list at your own leisure. But there are a couple things that are interesting about this case. First of all, this is a case that supports Project Zero and all these back connector boards. So I wanted to try out a board that I'd never tried out before. So when MSI was like, hey guys, do you wanna check out this case review? I'm like, send me a motherboard to go with it because I don't have any ATX Project Zero boards. And they're like, okay, no problem. And they ended up sending me like a CPU. Kind of gives you guys a good understanding of the type of system that you'll build in this type of case. So shout out to MSI for that because it was just something I wasn't expecting. I don't know how I feel about this case because there are a few strange things with it. First of all, the glass panel, the way that this glass is attached at the front, them having to put a sticker on the front saying, hey, don't yank on the glass. I feel like there could have been a bit of a better solution to that. And when I pulled the glass off, it's the type of double-sided tape that you find, I think it's called outdoor double-sided tape. It's the clear stuff and it's like that, but thinner and that's what's holding the glass panel on. Look, ultimately, if you're not moving the case around. I don't think that's gonna be much of a problem, but if you are yanking that front panel off, try and use the technique that I showed you in the video. In terms of the case flex, there is none, which is a nice surprise. We have seen quite a few cases lately that have been made out of paper mache and this isn't one of them. As for the design, it is a little bit more unique than the typical fish tank cases we see because it has that angular front panel. But again, I'm over these fish tanks. I've got to say it because there's nothing really new going on with this case design. I will give MSI credit for trying to build a case that is really geared towards back connector motherboards because you got to remember, this isn't just for MSI back connector boards. This will support all back connector boards. And when you're designing a case, yeah, I get it that MSI is like a first party motherboard manufacturer or whatever. There is one thing that I like about this as opposed to a lot of other fish tanks that we see. And they, I think they kind of borrowed this one from Lee and Lee. I know I'm saying it, but the front IO being at the bottom, I kind of like that. I don't hate that at all. The difference being with the Leon Lee case is you can move this around, but this one is set statically. I mean, it does, it, it's no real big deal. Also, something else I didn't mention that I didn't really pay attention to that part of the video was, it's got that MSI logo at the front for lighting. I hate the dragon. <laughs> that techie MSI, how they wrote it with like the lines. You've seen it, they did it on like some boards last year or the year before, and they did it on their other case. I was just like, MSI, but it's like lines, like the M's align, the S's align, and the I, and it just looks like so yeah, yeah. futuristic. They should have done something like that on here. MSI, come on guys. You supply a vertical GPU bracket in the case, but no riser cable. I had to use my own riser cable for this. For a little bit extra money, you could have added it. Just include the riser cable, right? Just include it, and it would just make it a bit better value. But overall, not a terrible attempt from MSI. I do like their smaller back connector cases like the MATX ones, but yeah, this is perfectly fine. Last bit is, this is the first MSI case that I've seen that doesn't have included fans. And I think that's strange considering again, the price. Yeah, for that money, they could have just included the fans as well. I don't hate it. It was a pleasure to build in. I, I don't hate this case at all. As far as back connector cases go as well, it is probably one of the easiest back connector cases to build in. And like I mentioned earlier in the video with the cutouts for the power cables and stuff, it's really nice to not have to fiddle around with that. Yeah, 